You know, they say the best democracy are those where people are truly represented. And today on, well, VSA, we'll be talking about representative democracy, grassroots democracy, and it comes with, you know, listening to the people and actually taking action on behalf of the people, which ultimately brings about development. Welcome to VSA. I'm Suleiman. You know, grassroots governance in Nigeria has been at the center of the best growth in the country. When things worked for the country, it was largely the reason for the development scene. In times past, grassroots governance made greater societies, brought the people closer to their leaders, their needs expressed with assurances and actions on steps to better their communities. Now, communities make societies, and when one is lacking across the country, there are pointers to structural deficiencies masterminded by politicians in the country and delivered by their own. Now, the local government, where politics is most interested, yes, it is. It is also very close and strongly felt, sadly, is dying in Nigeria. Now, the streets don't feel their governments again, no thanks to our dysfunctional grassroots governance and government. So, schools are not getting built again. Primary health care has been left in the hands of state governments who hardly look towards and after these people. Now, the pain uh, is greatly and most strongly felt in the areas of security, where the grassroots make all the difference. Today on VSA, we have passionate grassroots politicians and administrators, uh, people who have so big a value for local administration. And now being joined by Benedicta Eboahi, uh, she's a former executive chairman, Isako East local government in Edo State, south of Nigeria. Olua Gbemiga Michael Abiola, he's a vice chairmanship candidate for Agege local government area in Lagos State, southwest of Nigeria, and he's also the present secretary to the local government and former youngest sole administrator, I like that, to the local government. And pretty much later, Badibor Rhodes Vivo will be joining us. He's uh, the 2019 Lagos West Senator candidate. And uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Let me quickly start with uh, Benedicta here. And, uh, uh, you know, time was when Nigerian grassroots governance was greatly admired as, uh, you know, politicians and, uh, you know, administrators all look to, you know, getting closer to the people. What's the you know, what's the feel like at the moment? Uh, how much of a focus are the people getting uh, from the administration, administrators? Good evening, Suleiman, and um, to Benga uh, on the other side. Um, well, as you know, local government, uh, local government is the third tier of, um, you know, uh, government in Nigeria. Um, I can speak for Edo State, having been the immediate past uh, chairman of this uh, East Local Government uh, Council, I can say that, um, well, the uh, local government administration is, yes, it's not the way um, it used to be, and there are many factors uh, responsible for that. I would say in Edo State, uh, while I was um, chairman of the uh, local government, we worked very, very closely with the state government to bring development very close to the people. I can also tell you now that in the area of healthcare, the state government is actually reforming the sector uh, to make sure and to bring, you know, good medical services and healthcare services closer to the people um, at the at the grassroots. So um, it's not all um, dovey, you know the way it used to be, but it's not so a uh, hopeless case um, in, in a those states um, because we're working in partnership with the government um, to make sure, with the state government, to make sure that our people actually uh, get the best of um, health care, the best of um, primary schooling, the best of secondary schooling, 
and um, a hope for others. So it's not really a hopeless situation um, in our state. Uh, I'll give you one example. There was a particular um, health center that the local government um, rehabilitated, and it was the, the state government that helped to put um, solar power uh, in the building just to make sure that um, the, the local people had access to 24 hours and power. So it's not really a bad situation in our case um, in Edo State. Well, uh, thank you for that opening. And uh, uh, quickly, uh, let me come to Oluagbemiga. And uh, you are at the center of it all. The center because uh, this is the economic capital of Nigeria, Lagos State. As uh, a politician uh, who has also felt the pulse of the people, what do you think is missing when people talk about, you know, a dysfunctional grassroots governance? Well, um, thank you, Sulaiman. Um, that is functional, um, you would say, but um, I think we're getting there. I don't think it's, um, it's totally dysfunctional. I think on the contrary, um, we, we, we are the system where we keep you know, learning and trying to make it better than it was or used to be. For Lagos as a case study, you, you see that um, with the creation of the 57, um, uh, 37 extra LCDAs, um, the state itself has created a structure that can get closer to the grassroots, uh, you know, and this has really helped in, you know, connecting to the people. You know, what's the essence of local government? Why was local government created in the first place? Is bringing governance closer to the people. And why is there the third tier? That the third tier because you can you can totally take out um, the the value of state government, you know, from from local governance. But, uh, you know, where we are right now in Lagos, the, the, the structural, um, the creation of that 57 local government structure has really helped, you know, to, to get that governance through to the people. We are not there yet, you know, um, there's, still, there's still more that needs to be done. There's still more legal, legal frameworks, more guidelines, more um, uh, um, creational um, agendas, um, a lot more needs to be done, but so far, so good. You know, for Lagos as a case study that I can speak about. You know, I was, I was, I was a school administrator. You know, you know what I'm happy about. because you said uh, you a lot also needs to be done. And yeah. what, what we talk about, you know, the closeness of the people. That's the whole essence why we're here. Uh, yeah. Let me go back. Let me go back to uh, Benedict where he here. You know. The people are very, very important here, and that's the whole essence of you being at the center of uh, such, you know, uh, administration. Uh, being someone who's been there, th there must be a way of connecting with the people. Uh, for instance, uh, in Lagos State, where Oluagwimga is, I'll come back to him to uh, give us a sense of that. Some people have always complained that they don't even know their councillors, let alone their chairman. And uh, well, it, it, everything is directed towards the state. So, at in Edo State, how were you able to, you know, bridge that gap? You know, make it Thank so you very much, yes, sir. make it so easy for people um, to reach out to you. Okay. Well, again, um, um, the local government uh, structure is about the people. Um, I could not have done it on my own without, you know, the help of the state government. For instance, if you look at the area of education, we were able to partner with the state to make sure that, um, you know, our teachers in the state were trained, which then filtered to the primary schools that we were, you know, uh, operating across the state and at the local government um, level. I personally, I would say I ran an open door uh, policy because you cannot work with somebody like uh, Governor Godwin Obaseki and be living in the diaspora while you're su supposed to be a local government chairman. The governor made it mandatory for all local government chairmen to live within their local governments. For it, I live in Owebe. Every person in my local government, Owebe, you, as you know, is the place where the 10-kilometer road race takes place um, every um, year. So I would say living among the people gave me a first-hand experience 
to know what their challenges were. I was not in diaspora. They could reach me at any time of the day. There were many, many times that people in my local government uh, woke me up at 6 a.m. to solve one problem or the other. They were the first people I saw when I woke up, and they were the last people I saw before going to bed. So it was, um, you know, uh, the governor made it mandatory for us to be reached. It is true that prior to this time, a lot of local government uh, uh, chairmen were living in the in the state's capital, and that is in Benin. But in my own case, I had to live in Ogwe just because I wanted to understand what the challenges of our people were. So it was a very good thing that I lived, you know, among my own people where they had direct access, access to me. And that one also made it possible for me to report back to the state governor to, you know, explain what the challenges of our people were. So we had a very good um, relationship in terms of access and all that. It was not a problem um, in my case at all. Well, I'll come back to Lagos. Thanks uh, for, uh, you know, uh, bringing that uh, angle. I'll come back so that we can stretch it. Uh, you know, Olagbimga, that, that, that's something I, I could pick easily from uh, listening uh, to uh, Benedictus' experience as a, a, a grassroots administrator. And it, it is, uh, you know, having an open access uh, policy to these people. Uh, if you look at it, uh, the kind of Africa type uh, grassroots democracy is akin to what we had in the Greco-Roman era, you know, when democracy was actually, you know, uh, formed, having access, uh, unrestricted access to the people. Now, in Lagos, which is, uh, uh, well, a big city, you know, uh, place, how is it easy for people within, you know, such a, a city as Lagos to also have that kind of interaction, rapport, open access, um, you know, within such local government areas. It just might be different with yours in Agege. For those who live around Lagos will understand that the people are grassroots in nature in the first place. But does this apply to other parts of the state? Well, well, in, in Lagos, I, I, I think um, the, the accessibility is, is quite commendable. I must tell because you know because Lagos is is cosmopolitan in nature. Um, for example, if you look at past elections in Lagos, in areas where you have um, that are highly cosmopolitan, like the Okota areas, the Festac areas, you find representatives who are even non-indigenous of Lagos and are becoming councillors. How did that happen? That that happened because that area actually determines that community determines. And your popularity among your community determines how far or how well you can go. So for me, I think in Lagos, and because again, like I said, the, the, the structure of the local government council development areas has helped. For instance, in Agege, you have two um, local governments. Well, one is the uh, local government area, and the other is local council development area. So I can imagine, for example, if as big as Agege is, you had just one chairman to, to, to cater or uh, 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 be in charge of that local government. Or a local government like Ali Mosho, who happens to be the largest local government in Nigeria. So I think breaking it down into the local council development areas has allowed for people within the community to be chosen as representatives. And because you are within, you have come from within that community, it's going to be, even, it's going to be difficult for you to leave that community. Because uh, every now and then, because of um, Lagos in its nature, one thing or the other would happen every other day. And so if you are not on ground, it is clear that you are not on ground. So I think that alone has made a lot of representatives. And also, it's also a personality thing. You know, I keep saying it, that when we have people with true sincerity of purpose who come into governance, you know, that helps, you know, to give that true representation as far as local government administration is concerned. And Lagos State, so far, so good, I must tell. You know, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll stay, I think, I'll just leave it at the personality aspect uh, which you raised. Uh, keep in mind, uh, some of us live in Lagos, and uh, some Lagosians will tell you that they are local 
administrators don't live within that uh, precinct, you know. Uh, well, it's a story, as you rightly said, it, it depends on personal, uh, on the personality, uh, yeah. because, uh, yes, on the personality, but that shouldn't be. There must be, uh, you know, rules, and uh, this is grassroots yeah. governance, yeah. and that's the whole yeah. essence. Yes, you're right, you're because, right, Slaymon. Yes, I, 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 absolutely, if we, because uh, professionally, I'm not supposed to speak personally, but again, I live in communities where the, 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 those who are in charge don't also live within that community. But I'll come yes. back to you. I'll come back to you. Let me quickly go back to Benedicta because uh, this is quite a, get an interest in seeing that honestly we have opened our policies. Uh, you know, Benedicta, until, until uh, you know, recently when COVID came, uh, governments, especially the state governments, realized the importance of the grassroots, uh, you know, uh, administrators. Uh, time was when uh, they don't have what you call autonomy, especially when it comes to disbursement of funds uh, to run the administration. Uh, the only time you get to hear about grassroots, you know, working is when uh, states want to embark uh, on health, you know, programs, as we have seen with, uh, uh, you know, COVID-19, as well as even uh, with the vaccination. So, the joint accounts run by state and local governments don't seem to have done grassroots, uh, you know, governance any good. Uh, are, there, are there some other, you know, things you would like to share? Are there things you, you thought that uh, maybe in tweaking with the constitution going forward, uh, you would love to see uh, to help, you know, better, you know, governance for the councils? Think that um, um, going forward, if the local governments uh, could have some kind of supervision, we are quite lucky in Edo State because uh, the governor uh, really does not um, um, touch local government funds. Yes, the, the local government, uh, the joint account committee is between the local government and the state. But we are very fortunate in that the governor does not um, touch the local government's part of the money, barring uh, statutory uh, deductions and all that. So, but I think that we're talking about local government autonomy across the country. Even with that autonomy, whenever it is granted, I think that the state should still have some supervisory um, kind of um, activity um, over the local governments. Uh, this is because there is so much that um, the state is doing uh, in partnership with the local governments. I, I gave you an example a short while ago uh, that um, there were uh, primary health care centers that were rehabilitated by the local government. But it was the state government that now put um, solar power into uh, those uh, primary health care centers. Let me also talk about teachers. We have hundreds of teachers across, you know, the local governments. And if not for the Edo Best program, which the governor of Edo State has embarked on, you know, you know, which has to do with the training of teachers, you know, it would have been very difficult, I'll say, no matter the kind of allocation coming to uh, local governments, for the local governments to bear that responsibility. So, so by that, help. sorry, let me butt in here. By, by, by that, uh, you do you mean that um, there was some kind of assistance uh, from the state, uh, you know, to the local government in actualizing some of uh, its programs? Yes, yes, I, I would say so because, I, I mean, it is well known that the, the governor of Edo State was adjudged the best uh, governor in the area of education. And he was rewarded with a national award by the Nigerian Union of Teachers um, two years ago. So I am saying that if not for the help, if not for the training that the uh, governor provided for local government teachers, I think it would have almost been impossible for the local government to bear that responsibility. So um, in a, the, the partnership between the state government and the local government has worked very, very well in the area of training, in the area of in, infrastructure. You know, So I think that um, 
Now that the governor is also looking at the area of um, secondary schools, I think it goes very well to have that kind of partnership. Otherwise, the load will be too much for the local government to bear. So that synergy is definitely working very well for local governments across Edo State. Let, let me stay with you, Benedicta, before I go back to Oluwag Bimiga, and it has to do with uh, what we see in uh, politics in Nigeria, talking about continuity. Uh, and for the councils, uh, some observers have uh, uh, this worry that, uh, well, the current two-year tenure uh, for council administrators uh, doesn't seem good enough. So do you think uh, having maybe, maybe a four-year tenure or maybe more or less into a three-year should be uh, suitable? The tenure currently um, in Edo State is three years. And I think across board, it's three years. Uh, of two terms. So you can do a tenure and uh, run um, a second time if uh, people uh, want you um, to return. So I think I would say it's not so bad to run a local council. And uh, definitely a one year tenure of three years is too small to um, achieve anything meaningful. So I think the two, the two tenures of, of three years is, um, is not so bad. A six-year tenure, which is broken down into two, um, is okay for any serious administrator to achieve um, whatever he or she wishes um, to achieve. Let me bring in Luag uh, Bimga uh, Michael here. Tell us, uh, uh, what's the tenure like for uh, those in Lagos? Yeah, in Lagos, it's, it's quite different, you know, um, about um, in 2017, I think, the Right Honorable Speaker of Lagos State House of Assembly sponsored a bill um, for a four-year double tenure for local government chairman in Lagos State. And the bill was passed in 2017, assented by the then governor. So in Lagos State right now, you, 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 you have the four-year double term for local government administrators in Nigeria. So, uh, you know, uh, Nigeria still fights the, you know, the bad effects of money politics. Uh, well, any moment from now, in uh, Lagos State, uh, politicians like yourself uh, will be going to the polls. Uh, so what's your experience of people seeking money uh, before casting their ballots? Hmm. Uh, you see, it's, um, it's, it's a societal dice function that needs to be really looked into because um, uh, it's something that affects even the politicians on the other end. So you find someone who, for example, wants to contest for local government chairman and every nook and cranny he gets to, he has to give something, he has to drop something, he has to drop money. And at the end of the day, he drops the money and gets into power and you still expect you know, that, that dividend like, like he promised. So I think it's something, it's a societal thing, it's a systemic problem. It's something that, you know, really ne needs to be looked into. Um, it's, it's become a menace, you know, for, for example, if, if I'm going out, for example, even as vice chairmanship candidate, I must make sure that at least I have quite some sum, you know, because you, you every, every way, even before the, day, before the D day, you know, before the day of election, you know, just because you, you have your, 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 your picture or your, uh, your picture on, on, on the banner or, or on, on your poster, anywhere you get to, you know, people request to, you know. So for, for me personally, it's, it's not a good experience. You have to be highly diplomatic so you don't spend yourself out. You have to be highly diplomatic so you don't also offend people and have them call you names, you know. So um, it's something that, you know, we really need to look into, you know. Maybe, you know, a legal framework to, would, do, would, do, would do a good you know, as regards, as regards that. Uh, still with you, Oluag Bimiga, do you think local government administration is necessary? Should it be scrapped? You know, uh, th this argument uh, came up uh, just uh, not too uh, distant a time where uh, lawmakers uh, at the center, the National Assembly in Nigeria, uh, where I think some of them thought uh, that uh, that uh, should be done away so with. Slimon, don't stress yourself too much. That that's totally disastrous. If if that happens, then then is 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 like saying the state itself has failed, because that's the only tier of government that the people see. You know, the, the, uh, the, there is no there is no 
sense of belonging that the citizens can feel without the local government. You need to see the joy on people's faces when they are trying to pick their councillors, you know, even before it gets to the local government chairman. And if you look at the structure of development in, in local government, in Lagos, for example, in Agege, as a case study, a lot of projects we have done have been projects that have been presented to the executive by the councillors. So even as a local government chairman, as as much as far as as good as it sounds that you are you live in your community, you still don't know every inch of that community. It is the councillors you depend on also who are the lawmakers at the grassroots level who would hear the cry of the people on the exact projects they need to they, that need to be done in that community, and they bring it to the to the local government. The executive committee decides on it, and then the project is delivered. So when you scrap that, tell me how. How can the state governor manage 57 local governments? We're not even talking of communities now. There are over 300 and almost 400 wards in Lagos State. How do you how do you penetrate that? In Agege, for example, we have about five um, um, health care centers. We are building two at the moment right now. You know, that makes it seven. Now we have seven wards. And the two we are building are in wards that don't have that facility. So which means that every ward in Agiki local government now has one healthcare center. How would the state know that? Look at the COVID example you made. How was the state able to disseminate information, um, um, uh, vaccinate, fumigate? It was through the local government structure. So it will be totally disastrous. It's not even it's not even a matter for debate. You know, local government has come to stay. It is highly important, and um, it is what nigeria needs actually if it is strengthening nigeria becomes strengthened if it is weakening nigeria becomes weak okay, let me go to benedicta now again you know time was when you know town halls you know were very important that's uh, you know the best way to communicate with uh, constituents uh, as uh, lawmakers seeking to represent the people but uh, has that changed? Uh, you know, do you get to have uh, same town hall meetings? How do you reach out? Uh, are the traditional rulers also helping in uh, the reach out to the people? Um, yes, I want to tie this question into what um, Benga just uh, explained. The local government structure is the closest to the people. Um, and the structure was created so that, you know, um, development can be accelerated. So it will be a very dangerous um, exercise, a very dangerous thing to go the path of scrapping local governments. How is it possible for the governor of Edo State, for instance, to uh, have, you know, know exactly what is happening in 192 wards that we have in the state? That, I'm not talking about communities now, wards. So it is impossible. We still have town hall meetings, by the way. You know, I do have, when I was going to present, um, my, by the way, I was chairman for one year because uh, my predecessor had some challenges uh, with the law. So I, I stepped in to uh, fulfill a constitutional requirement. And for the first one year, I had to meet with the people to give them in a, in a town hall uh, meeting to uh, read out my, um, uh, to present my achievements. And even before then, you know, when I presented my first budget, budget it was all, also in a town hall um, style meeting. So we do have a lot of town hall meetings. All in all, I would have had about four to five town hall meetings in my one year as um, local government chairman. So I would say that some of those meetings still happen. Even the governor uh, normally holds town meetings, uh, town hall meetings with us, but they are not as frequent as the ones we have at our own local level. Yes, we still have town hall meetings because that is where we have a feedback session from what our people want us to do for them. And, you know, it is from there we get very useful feedback. So, yes, we still have town hall meetings. Well, I think uh, it's a fine place for us to leave it. Uh, it's something we must stay on because uh, listening to both of you, uh, Africa and Nigeria, uh, have been able to understand the importance of grassroots governance and uh, but as uh, both of you also highlighted uh, uh, a lot needs uh, still needs to be done uh, to bring in development to the people 
Uh, I'd like to say many thanks for being such a nice company, uh, Benedicta Ebuahi, uh, former executive chairman, Ezako East Local Government Area, Edo State, and of course, uh, uh, Uluagbimga, Michael Abiola, and uh, well, best wishes in your elections uh, here in Lagos. Well, still to come on the show, Gladibor Rhodes joins us to talk more about grassroots governance here on VSA. Join us again. home run here on VSA and uh, our focus is still grassroots governance here in Nigeria and we've been able to look at uh, you know two uh, geopolitical zones in the country Nigeria's uh, southern region and of course uh, southwest but again in all of this effective governance uh, is as good as knowing the people and in Nigeria today there are states where the people have no feel or impact of their central government or the local government Education, health, security, and general infrastructure are lacking. Locals don't have good road access, don't have good hospitals, uh, are even unsafe in their own homes. So as a result of the absence of good grassroots governance, rural urban migration has been on the increase, leading to pressure on public infrastructure and the continuous depletion of the local communities. Nigeria's future lies in the grassroots, and it will make all the difference we want as a people. So it's high time we made a case of progression in Nigeria's grassroots as uh, they hold the key to better nations. Gladibo Rhodes Vivo 2019 Lagos West Senator Kennedy joins me now. Good to see you, uh, Gladibo. Again, uh, I, I, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you listened to Michael Luagbemiga because um, he said uh, some good things about the council administration in Lagos. He said almost everything is good and uh, working well. So uh, let's first have your assessment and knowing full well that, uh, well, uh, you're not just a, a grassroots politician, but also someone who's been in the opposition. Uh, give us a true picture uh, from your own bird's eye view of situation at the grassroots in Lagos State. Okay, um, my first foray into politics was running for local government chairman of Ikeja local government. And I, I think most Lagosians would agree that the entire system for the local government in Lagos State is not working. Um, especially when you understand what the local government is supposed to do. You see, the problem is a lot of people don't understand the responsibilities of the local government. There's so many problems that we push to the governor or to the president even, that is a direct responsibility for, of your local government. Now, unfortunately, there is a chicken and egg situation going on where the local government has been re reduced to an appendage of the political party in power. So I'm not just speaking for Lagos, I'm speaking generally. If you went to um, Port Harcourt, for instance, you'll find that it's mainly PDP um, local government chairmen that are there in an APC state. Because of the method by which we put um, local government chairmen in office, it's usually more of an appointment than an election. And because that is the case, you find that you have people that are just glorified contractors that have been put into these positions. It's a means of patronage. It's a means of rewarding um, political participation within the party at the grassroots level. So you don't find visionaries. You don't find people that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the governor and push for their own vision and push for the aspiration of their own people. 
and come up with their own framework and their own ideas of what should be done. You also find that their responsibilities have been usurped by the state. So, for instance, in Lagos, you see in terms of advert advertisements, in terms of taxes that can be collected, in terms of so many things that the local government should be in charge of, you see that it has been usurped by the state, which is very sad because the closer governance gets to the people, the government, that level of governance is supposed to then more accurately reflect the aspiration, the needs of those constituents. Let me come in, you know, like this. Uh, what were those things that made you say, wait a minute, I'm just going to go into this uh, grassroots administration when you contested for it. Uh, what were those uh, uh, forces uh, that, you know, brought you out to contest the election? Yes, um, I, I lived in Ikeja for most of my life when I'm um, in Nigeria. And I looked around and I saw that there's nothing that has really changed in 20 years. I mean, the gutters are still what they are. There's no innovation. You find the local government might catch some potholes, and then in six months' time, those holes are back there again. Um, there is no. I, I I was meeting people, and they were dying because there was no oxygen in hospitals. Why that might not be the original premise of local government? An innovative local government chairman could start to keep a database of this. An innovative local government chairman could start to use his position to advocate for better health care and better treatment of people that go to hospitals. And even start to keep a record or a database of how hospitals behave or treat certain people. People cannot be going to hospital and dying because the hospital does not have oxygen. And there are no repercussions of that for that. So innovation. So you take this platform that you have as local government chairman. What can you do? What are the things you can add on top of it? How can you partner with other agencies to bring you know, life into your wards, because these are just five, six wards, for instance, in Lagos State, or if you look at the INEC situation, 10, 11 wards. There's so much that can be done. And I just felt that um, because of the caliber of people that were being put in office and the reasoning behind why they were put in office, there was not really much expected of them. So in and other words, in other words, because you, you, you spoke about, sorry again to butt in here, uh, I'm trying to put in enough, uh, you know, for us to look at before we get off. So in other words, you spoke about the caliber of persons, you're looking at the personalities. Uh, that also means that uh, you can make it more vibrant. Uh, you can make it, uh, you can be very innovative. And council yeah. elections are rather council administration should go beyond having the kind of, you know, dirt, you know, markets uh, and even arbitrary and sewage system that we already have in places like this. You know, exactly. the College of Leaders come to play. Uh, we have uh, to look at the local council. How can we tweak, because in Lagos, where we are at the moment, uh, the council elections, the grassroots elections are up uh, in a few days' time. How can we start looking at the leadership recruitment process. Uh, you know, how can we sieve, uh, have a sieving system uh, that will bring about those who ultimately be candidates uh, for the grassroots uh, election? Okay, so we must understand something first. The politician that emerges is the reflection of the people that take a particular election seriously, right? So. If there is a lot of voter apathy and people that are curious about policy, people that you know have greater aspirations for their local government don't participate, then people that don't well, I, I I think uh, if you can hear me, there seems to be a glitch uh, to the connection. Uh, to you, uh, Badibo, I hope uh, it's uh, been sorted, but if it, if it, it isn't, then uh, uh, we just have to uh, reconnect. Uh, for those just joining us, uh, uh, you're watching Village Square Africa here on New Central Television, and we started, we've started a series uh, looking at grassroots governance, starting with Nigeria, speaking with uh, those uh, who are administrators uh, in the grassroots, 
And uh, for uh, before this time, we spoke with uh, someone, uh, a woman administrator in uh, the southern part of Nigeria, specifically Edo State, uh, to give us uh, what it was like uh, during her time in office. And uh, another man who's uh, going to go to the elections uh, in Lagos State in a few days' time, telling us how the workings of grassroots governance uh, uh, is, uh, or rather are, in Lagos. And Badebo was also telling us uh, before that break uh, how it's, that it's been. Like, I understand Badebo is back. Uh, apologies, uh, uh, Badebo. Uh, that's what we get uh, when we get, uh, you know, some of this uh, uh, technological connection with you. Uh, but again, good thing that you're back. So uh, let, let's start talking about the candidates uh, again. You were saying how we can get these uh, people, uh, qualified people, to represent the people. Well, not again. And uh, well, uh, we'll take a moment. Yes, we'll take a moment. We'll reconnect with Badibor so that we can uh, hear him out uh, on the best way uh, to get people, you know, present themselves to give uh, the people at the grassroots true and qualitative representation. We'll be back. Well, apologies uh, for those uh, two drop calls that are there. Uh, we now have uh, uh, Gbadibo joining us via phone. Uh, quickly here, uh, Gbadibo, let's uh, do this. Uh, you were saying, uh, you know, telling us uh, the way and manner we can actually get uh, qualified persons to represent those at the grassroots. Yeah, and I was saying that if more people got involved in their local government election, and people were turning out in mass vote. Then their selection process within the party will take it a lot more seriously to put people that can sell a vision, that have a manifesto, that have a transformative agenda for their local government. But because the output is so dismal, it's so little. Anything goes. So they will put people that are loyal to the party. They will use the local government to reward people that have been loyal to the party. And will continue to, and will continue to make sure that the patronage system continues unabated. So I think the first step is for people to start to understand what their local government um, system and the people in charge, what they are responsible for. And, and after that, start to come out to vote for people that will be accountable to them. And it is in that system and in that process that we will start to get some credible candidates emerging. You know, the, 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 one of the key things that you raised and now, uh, Gbadibo, is, uh, you know, getting people who, who are loyal, you know, so talking about people, uh, some people that are brought up are people who are loyal to the party as against loyal to the people or to the consequence, uh, uh, which is what we've all seen. Quickly here, tell us uh, uh, how much of, uh, you know, a role the people can play in pointing, you know, uh, to the direction of those who truly uh, are, are loyal to their cause, as against uh, loyal to the cause of the political party? Um, I, I feel that, well, generally opposition politics, that, that, that tends to help because those opposition is looking to the people to put them in power, right? So their loyalty is to the people. So that's the first step. It's also, it also humbles politicians and the political system to see that the people can get involved and put them in or remove them. So that then starts to make them accountable to the people. And people need to understand that 
you can only make where you are popular or if there is a lot of voter apathy. So if people don't turn out for an election, you can easily write the results. But if there are lots of people that come out to, you know, to give to give the political party a sense of their a sense of their referendum on their performance, there's little that that party can do. Because if you look at populations in local governments, 20,000, 30,000, and then you find that pretty much about a thousand people determine who their local government chairman will be. And, and that happens year after year. So you find that it's just the same of the same because nobody's really challenging them or you know, holding up to a higher standard. I think that's what uh, many Nigerians have said. Uh, you know, that's a concern shared by a lot of Nigerians that uh, there's not uh, uh, much, you know, opposition. There's not much, you know, uh, divergent views that will more uh, like free up the local government. Uh, almost everyone who is in that uh, circle speaks uh, on the side uh, of the state government, saying, "Hey, come on, it's okay, even if uh, we don't have." this financial autonomy, we're okay with what is given to us uh, to run the affairs of the administration. So what's the solution to getting better grassroots governance? Okay, so for me, again, it goes to voter participation. The moment people start taking local government elections seriously, the next cycle would change because the politician wants to win and he will do and reinvent himself in any way that will allow him to win. So if people that care about policy, that care about transformative agenda in a ward or a local government start coming out to vote in mass and they are putting people of another party into position, that will jolt the party to sit up. Because currently, right now, if I came into a position just by virtue of my loyalty to a party or to a godfather, I am not going to feel accountable to the people, especially when the people don't take the election seriously. And the local government has such huge potential in terms of healthcare, in terms of your environment, in terms of even drainage and how we deal with flooding and um, water, water and waste management in Lagos State. Primarily, it's the local government that should be managing most of this. And the fact is, you don't participate, but you will feel the effects. So, in, in closing, let's drive this home. Uh, because you were quite, you know, younger when you came on, on, on board uh, to run for you know, when you ran uh, for local government administration and pretty much later yeah. again, Nigerians were excited seeing you in the, the 2019 election uh, where you also gave it a shot to be at the National Assembly. Uh, yeah. How much of, uh, you know, a, you know, a support uh, are the youth getting, uh, young Nigerians getting in coming, uh, you know, into the fray, you know, speaking politically? Uh, as they move towards 2023, is there any likelihood that we'll see more uh, young people come on board and become successful at the polls? I believe that there is a move and a push for youth to come into politics. And I have had a very pleasant experience in my party, even in the party I was in before. Um, so there's a, there's a desire for youth to come in because we're in an age of innovation, technology, and it's just a new time. So I think as long as young people are willing to come in and do the work, you know, network, be on ground, do the grassroots thing, do the, do the meeting and the regular interaction with people, the, the, there is a lot of space for success. But it requires a lot of persistence, determination, and the will to actually serve. 
because that's what will keep driving you and that's what will keep bringing you back. Well, no doubt, I think uh, we'll, we'll, we'll like to stay on this. Uh, grassroots governance is uh, so important, uh, you know, just as uh, every aspect of governance in Nigeria. Uh, by the board, Rhodes Vivo, many thanks for speaking with us and thank you for thank your you time. For having me. And I will look forward to having you physically here at the New Central Studios uh, so that we can talk more about politics. Just, just give me a heads up. All right, thank you. Always a delight speaking with you. Well, that's a wrap on Viesa today. I'm Suleiman, and I'll see you again.